this video I will calculate the total average of our portfolio and I will compare it to an index like the S&P 500. I already typed in all the code in order to make this video a little bit shorter but I will I will put a copy in the comments below so you can download the file and you can just change the tickers and you can change the dates. So we need pandas, Y finance, date time and matplotlib. We need the start date, we need an end date. Here you can change the dates. Um, we need the tickers and for tickers you can go to Yahoo Finance and you type in the name of the stock and next to it you will see the ticker code which Yahoo is using. And you're using other countries like for example Germany it's gonna be .de when you're using stocks from Holland it's gonna be .as from Amsterdam and Australia is gonna be .ax so we're gonna download all this information make sure everything is completed otherwise he didn't download one particular stock then we're going to concatenate all this information into one data frame so you can copy and paste this code in later we will name all the columns and here we have to use the correct order but in fact we don't really need to use the correct order because anyway it will calculate an average so it doesn't really matter but to make it more to make it more obvious it's better to use the same the same uh, like the same ticker code for the same column so this is google this is wire this is rwe the the first function we need to use is percentage change so what it's going to do it's going to relate all stocks to one and the daily difference will any any time be visible here so the next function we need to use is the cumulative product function. So we'll say cumulative returns equals to one plus stock returns dot com products. So here we have the cumulative returns. So one dollar of Google in 2020 is now today one dollar and 71 cents. So we have the cumulative return of Google. We have the cumulative return of wire. In a further step, we're gonna calculate all those values together. Oh, and this NAN, it's it's because it's the previous data, so it doesn't really matter this this value. Uh, so the, the next thing we're gonna do is to take the sum of all those stocks and then divide it by the amount of stocks we have in our portfolio. In my case, there are 20 stocks in this portfolio. Axis one, it means that it's gonna calculate all those numbers on this axis so and then we have a total we have to put everything into a data frame so we have the total return of the data and we have the total return inside the data frame now we're going to do exactly the same thing with the s p 500 so we're going to download the s p 500 we use the same start and end date as we did before here we have the data frame of the S&P 500. We only need the adjusted close and we're gonna calculate the percentage change. We're going to calculate the cum product, the cumulative product. And here we have the total return of the S&P 500. So the total return of the S&P 500 is 1.36. So it means that the S&P 500 went up 36.5% in three years. We'll wrap that data into a data frame. And so here we have 812 rows. And here above we have 835 rows. Uh, the difference in amounts of rows is because I'm using stocks from Germany, from Canada, from Holland, and from America and Australia. If, for example, the Nasdaq is closed on Labor Day, for example, but in Germany the stock market is open, here it will add another row, and here it will not. So that's because we have that's the difference between the rows. It doesn't matter because we will change everything and we will calculate an average on a monthly base. So then we will have the same amount of rows, which is going to be 39 in my case. And we're using the resample function for that. So and then in the end, we'll plot the graph. We'll say return portfolio, total return. 
and here we can see that our dummy portfolio did better than the s p 500 index on a period of three years time so, um, not only that it outperforms the s p 500 but that it has a lower standard deviation than the s p 500 so if we really want to calculate this value so this value is the standard deviation it's the amount of risk that you're taking with your portfolio if we want to calculate that we need to calculate the covariance matrix and then we have to go further from that maybe i will do that in another video but for today i'm finished